My name is Judy Marlowe, as he said. I'm a team lead over in uh, the St. Louis office for CATI. Um, I've been here seven years, and before that, I've worked with SOLIDWORKS for a total of about 16 years, eight and a half years of that was a design, as a designer. So I have a lot of information to cover today. Um, I hope you, you get a lot of information out of this video um, and out of this um, session today. If you can, I have a lot of information today. We're going um, to talk about translations in general, okay? CADs have many formats, right, depending on what language you're using, just like we use with, with verbal language, right? If we go from Spanish to English, we need a translator, okay, in order for it to be meaningful. Think of it the same with CAD software. If we're going from a package like Creo or Katia or Inventor over to SOLIDWORKS, again, we need some kind of software or some means of translating that information. Now, as we go from taking translations, okay, they're subject to things like the translator itself. Depending on how well an interpreter is going to interpret, let's say, Spanish to English or vice versa, the same thing along the ways with third-party CAD software to a neutral file, in this case, and I just to SOLIDWORKS. So CAD translation is no different, but I want to show you a bunch of tools that we have. Um, to work with and things that we can go through. I've got a lot of information, um, about five different little sections in here. The very first section I'm going to talk about is understanding the file types, both 2D and 3D. With the information I'm going to give you, especially in the first section, have your snippet tool ready or something, maybe, you know, take a screenshot or again, you can watch the recording when it comes up. Um, a lot of this information is coming from a SOLIDWORKS translation techniques class that CATI developed back in 2012. Did a lot of research, gathered information that we just don't see, you know, in any documentation. So that's where I'm pulling this from. So I'm going to explain to you these different file types. We're also going to look at different import formats. I'm going to go through diagnostics, repair options when diagnostics, you've exhausted, you know, everything that you can do. And then I want to talk a little bit about 3D interconnect. All right. So let's go. Understanding the different file types. I'm not going to read all of these slides. Again, these are great informational slides for you. Different 2D file types include TWG and DXF. They are the most common that I think we see um, in the 2D world. And then you also see a lot of IGES files as well. When you're importing this, a DWG is a native CAD file to AutoCAD. Um, it has lines, text, fonts, dimensions, et cetera. SOLIDWORKS can import DWGs with the 2D data only. It can also support 3D faces of 3D WDWG uh, files, ah, tongue tied. And then SOLIDWORKS does not export though to a 3D DWG, okay? So just some information. DXF, pretty common, okay? This was developed by Autodesk and um, it's strictly 2D information. And you'll pull it over and I will show you how we can pull over a DXF into SOLIDWORKS in, in a few different ways. I just, uh, last one here I wanted to mention in 2D world, uh, I just, you can see what it stands for, um, Initial Graphics Exchange Specifications. This is great if anybody's doing any trivia for anyone. Um, these are used for mostly transferring surface data, okay? So these are your three basic files for 2D. 3D file types. Uh, I just, pretty popular. Wow, it's been around for quite a while, right? 1979. One of the first different file types that contains wireframe or surface data. Okay, when I point out that there's no part history, what I mean is that you're not gonna have anything except a, what I call a dumb solid. It's going to come in, you're not gonna have a feature tree. Um, you're not, you're just going to have a, a solid, okay? There's different tools in SOLIDWORKS that you can use to manipulate that geometry, but again, you're kinda um, stuck to, you know, a dumb solid. Can take any of the files that we pull in and use uh, FeatureWorks, which is a SOLIDWORKS professional and premium tool, 
where you can actually take a dumb solid and um, either do an automatic or manual reverse engineer in order to make a feature tree out of the model. Uh, step files, very, very popular. Again, stands for standard for the exchange of product. This came about many years ago. Um, I think it was in the, oh, I can't remember. I didn't write it down here, maybe the 80s. Um, this was a joint venture between industry and government. So what happened was Boeing used CATIA. Their suppliers, GE Aircraft Engines uses, used Unigraphics. Pratt & Whitney used Unigraphics. And then Rolls-Royce used Computer Vision. And they all needed to know how to talk to each other. So that's when step files were created. They're wireframe, surface, or solid data. Now, there are three kinds of step files. And if you weren't sure what they were all about, I'm going to tell you. AP203, those files are just uh, standard fire files that are just going, they're not going to have any color associated with it, okay? Then they came out with AP214, which now has some body, face, and curve colors. And then the most recent step file is the AP242. What that does is now includes not only the colors, um, it includes also manufacturing data called PMI. This is something that you would use in SOLIDWORKS MBD, which is model-based definition. Okay? I told you I got lots of information here. Some more 3D files, parasolid files, and ACES files. Now, SOLIDWORKS was built on a parasolid kernel, just as AutoCAD, CAD key was built on an ACES kernel. So why is that really important? Since the kernel that they're that they were designed on is kind of the brain of the system. SOLIDWORKS works best with parasolids. Now, if you pull in a parasolid file, you will have some of the best results. The parasolid files, our extensions are X underscore T and X underscore B. In some systems, if they don't work, you might have to rename their file extensions, and you'll see there to add a little bit more information, okay? Uh, again, a dumb solid, unless you reverse engineer it, no part history. The ACES kernel, again, has a, um, an ACES, has a file extension of SAT file. So when you um, import these files, and it's not a parasolid, this would be your next option, but SOLIDWORKS would, would, would work best with a parasolid file. Just to throw in two more IDF. If you use CircuitWorks, which is in SOLIDWORKS Premium, this is for circuit boards. Again, it's an old, old version format designed in 92. Uh, you will see here there are four types of IDF files that have read and write capabilities. You've got the EMN, BRD, BDF, and IDB. I think IDB is probably the one I see most often. Then we have our VMRL. I can't believe the Internet is... Is that old? 94. They made the modeling software, or not the software, but the language to be the virtual reality uh, markup language, which was later changed to modeling. The VMR packages are designed that, that we can export graphic images just for internet viewing. Okay. The WRL, we've, I think most of us have seen that kind of extension. Again, it's viewing purposes at all. And you can also use a VMRL plugin for a web browser. Now, you can import WRLs. I probably wouldn't do so to make any kind of file because uh, it, it, it would be an absolute last resort, um, but I wouldn't use it for modeling, basically. Um, it's just flat polygons. There's no surfaces at all. Very difficult to work with. So if you wanted to take an existing, uh, again, it's mostly just graphics. And then we have our CATIA files. We've got the CGR files, which are graphic files, and then we have the HCG, which is the highly compressed graphics. Again, these are mostly for viewing purposes only. Now, they can be written out by CATIA, but again, just graphical information. We can create those files and even open the CGR files. Again, lots of information before I start getting into a little bit of live demoing. So, limitations. Again, I'm not going to read through all of these, but these are the limitations of the native translators, okay? So you can see here most of these, 
will import solid data or body data or features. Okay. Inventor, if you want to open up an inventor file, you will need to have inventor or inventor view to be installed on the same machine. The inventor viewers, there is one for 2020. Uh, it's buried really deep. So if you ever go into their website and look, it looks like it's only on the cloud. Uh, go to their support section under downloads and you can get the 2020 viewer, okay? So you don't, if you, if you have another um, person that you're using inventor files for. Okay, again, mechanical desktop, Rhino, Rhino's just body data. Now you can pull in like Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator. It'll just give you some outline shapes, okay? You're not going to get any, or decals, et cetera. Uh, sketch pictures, if you've had any of these SolidWorks advanced part classes, we can pull in a picture on a sketch and then you can actually use it as a What's the word? A template, okay, so that you can make a regular sketch and, and design around it, okay? So importing files. Here's a list of the best import files for SolidWorks, okay? They're in order of the best file. So what I mean by that is if you're pulling in a Creo part, best thing is to have, if your customer or coworkers using Creo, ask them to give you a native pro e translator part how do you get that they would open up creo get the part do file save as solidworks and it would give you a solidworks file that's the native pro engineer translator okay um, step files step files you can see here are really high on the list um, after parasolid and again the trans the native translators are the best okay hope nobody's trying to write these down <laughs> Again, continued a little bit, AutoCAD, the 2D is for DWG DXF. If you're using the mechanical desktop or the inventor, you can see they can also give you a, a native translated SOLIDWORKS file. If not, in this case, best would be ASUS because it's built on that kernel and then I would pick step. One thing that I'd like to suggest is, you know, working with customers or vendors that are giving me files, we always seem to take the file they give us and work like heck if it, you know, to, to make it to work to if we can pull it into SolidWorks. If you have a lot of import problems with files, you know, ask your customer, ask your vendor, or if you're going up to uh, 3D Content Central and pulling a file down, pick a different file, pick one that we suggest that would work best in SolidWorks, okay? So um, it's only translated as best as they translated to give to you, you know, is how much, how easy it will be for you to open up and work with those files, okay? All right, whenever you open up a standard file, your default templates, this is in your SolidWorks system options, it is going to pull in using one of these formats that you have there. Okay, and there's two radio buttons. One here is always use this default. So what happens is you open up a file that you wanna pull in for translation, it will automatically pull one of these. If you choose this second radio button here called prompt, this will prompt you to pick a template and it won't pull, and that would be whatever templates you have in your file locations. Okay, so then you can pick and choose. So anyway, otherwise, this is the templates, that's where they're coming from, just so that you're aware of that. If you're exporting out, if a customer, if you have a file in SOLIDWORKS, a customer or vendor is asking you for information, again, use the native file format, unless they've asked you for something specific. specific. Okay. Again, steps are pretty popular, and again, I hope you have your snippet tool out. Continued here is my last informational section here of section one. Um, again, different files here using CAD key IFC, which is your um, printed circuit boards here, and then the different formats that are involved with that. Ooh, lots of information I did. All right, let's go ahead and move forward. Um, import formats. 
when I talk about neutral formats versus native formats, what I'm talking about is the neutral formats are the ones that are the X underscore T, okay, for parasolid. Um, STEP, STP files. ASIS, SAT files, and IGES. The native CAD formats also would be the CATIA V5. Now, CATIA V5 is kind of a weird animal. You require sometimes separate licensing, or you need a, a specific translator to that. You can also see here that you've got inventor files, CREO files, also solid edge, and these are all their file extensions. What are the benefits of importing a file? Well, if you take a neutral file format, you're able to make changes without having the native CAD software. Okay, you can add drafts, you can add cuts, you can do a lot of different information to that. If I have a native CAD import, there's fewer translation steps you have to do. So you don't have to convert it to a neutral format before you just use that native file. Oh, and you can also get a feature tree with Inventor and uh, Pro Engineer or Creo part. Okay, so try to start with those native formats and then try the neutral and see what works best. I wanted to throw this in here if you haven't used GrabCAD Workbench. The GrabCAD, of course, we've, I think many of us have used and been in to get different files or macros, things like that. They have a built-in CATIA V5 translator. I stumbled upon this a few years ago when I had a customer that just could not pull in these CATIA V5 parts into SOLIDWORKS. It just wasn't working even though, you know, SOLIDWORKS tries to do a pretty good job of it, but it just isn't there yet. So what we did was we went into Workbench, all right, uh, again, it's a free sign-in, pulled in the part, and what it did was it converted it for us, and then I downloaded it back as a step file, and I was able to give the customer. So it worked out really well because sometimes if you only have to convert a CATIA v5 file, once in, you know, once a year, once every six months, if, if at all, you don't want to buy a very expensive translator just for that file. So that's just another option for you. All right. So we're going to import, I'm going to import a, um, actually a DXF data um, two different ways. The first one I'm going to do is I'm going to take a DXF drawing that I had. I'm going to import import it as a drawing. Then I'm going to call that same file up and pull it into a sketch into a 3D part, okay? So moving forward, what I'm gonna do is go in here and open up, I've got my SOLIDWORKS 2020 here. I'm gonna open up a DXF file that I have, okay? The import options we're gonna go over in a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead here to our all files. You can see here that this is all the files we can save out, files from SOLIDWORKS to these native file formats, okay? The DXF, doesn't matter what I pick, but um, if I choose a DXF here, take my, my uh, plate, let me do an open, and it's going to come in and ask me what do I want to do with this DWG. I'm going to pull it in first as a drawing. All right, this is your translation window. It's going to come up with a window that um, the black background is always default. I like white because I can see a little bit better. This has no bearing on how it's going to come into SOLIDWORKS. Because it's 2D data and we're putting it into a 2D format in SOLIDWORKS, we have a choice of doing selected layers, select layer selected for the sheet or whatever we like. So we can also turn off, if you don't want the border, we could turn off a border here or we can clean it up. Um, if we don't want dimensions, we don't have to. I'll take off the border for right now. I'm gonna go ahead and say next. When I do that, we're gonna come up with um, a little bit more information, okay? First of all, pay very close attention to the units. If this is inches, um, inches or, or millimeters or feet and inches, make sure that you know what the data units are for that file you're pulling in, okay? We do have windows, preview windows and zooming in and zooming out. And then what this shows you is the top, um, it's a predefined view, it's just gonna go into the is a top view. Paper size, I know that this is a C size landscape, but you have other choices here or user defined. One big thing I like to make sure also is the drawing sheet scale. I usually leave mine at one to one unless I know something different. 
position. You can position it zero, zero, or I just say center in sheet. That way, when I pull it in to my model, it's going to be um, even all the way around. You'll see what I mean in a second. It goes through the translation. It pulls it in. I took off the border because I knew that I had a border here in my template that I picked. And you can see here now we just have 2D, just lines, arcs. Nothing here is parametric, but you do have dimensions. Okay. But that's how you would translate this file in as a 2D drawing. Okay. And then you can save it off as a drawing file. Now, what I also want to look at is now importing it as if I wanted to use that in a and make a part from it, a 3D part. I don't want just a drawing. I just, you know, just don't want that legacy data pulled in and so I can just see it and manipulate it. I want to actually make a model of it. So what I'm going to do is leave on my import, instead of this radio button, I'm going to import it into a new part. When I do that, I'm going to hit next. There we go. I'm going to pay attention here to the import data again. Notice that our window is just a little different now, right? Let me change this to white. The preview information is still the same, but now we have add constraints and import dimensions. Importing dimensions, we'll pull them in. They still will not be parametric. They're just going to be 2D. Um, maybe when I'm doing a model, I won't really want those in there for now. I might leave them off and then use some other fully defined sketch maybe to define the size of it. Um, constraints, this is adding relationships. If it sees that maybe that was a horizontal line or close to it or vertical line, it will add in constraints as well. For this, um, I'm going to do selected layers because I don't want the border. I don't want dimensions. Def points, I'm not sure what's on there. You can see all of this is on the zero layer. What I can also do is clean up this. Maybe I only want to pull in this view, or I can pull in all of them. I can say next, and we have a cleanup window here. We have merging points. So if in the 2D space, net DXF, you have lines that aren't actually touching, uh, you can adjust this. I leave it by default, and this will merge them so that it'll have a line. Um, merge together or a corner. We can, I also merge overlapping entities just in case there's one on top of another. We have other advanced tools if you'd like. In this case, I'm going to remove some entities. Uh, I'm just going to leave this top view here and use that for my model. In doing so, um, I can window around here. Now notice you're not going to see anything until I window. I wish they'd show me my window, but when it turns red, I can say remove. Uh, same thing here, I think, hold on, yeah, even if a black background, you still don't see it, just so you know, and then this is the only piece of information that I'm going to pull in. As it comes in, you're going to notice it doesn't come up as a drawing. It comes in as a sketch in a model. Now, the sketch right now, you'll see it has a pencil with a little um, no symbol. If I go there, I can see that by default, it came in on the front plane. If I want to change it there, I can. And now I have that in my top plane. I also can't edit this, okay? If I want to edit the original, I have to right mouse click and say, make edit sketch. Then I can do something with it. Otherwise, if you want to leave it, right mouse click and say, leave as a reference sketch, I often suggest to do this so you can see the original imported sketch itself. Then what I would do is just go ahead and use this as somewhat of a template. Okay. So my top plane, I would go ahead and create a sketch, and then I would just start drawing using um, that information there and create my sketch. I must have picked a, um, a millimeter template, that's okay, because I can just say 0 0.5, I want it a half inch, I can go ahead and do that. I, on this base right here, I can create a new sketch. I can convert entities, and maybe I want to convert, uh, let's see, I'm going to do all of this in one. 
again, we can all do this differently. Looks like these two lines here are different. Let me convert that entity there. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim up just a little bit using my power trim. Uh, I don't want this information here. Okay, good. And then I can use that. So I'm using it as a template. And you can see then from my original sketch, it's very, very easy for me to take that and just use it for whatever I would like. Um, just, I probably put this in two different sketches for just this demonstration here. Um, I'm going to convert, let me undo that, make sure you don't have anything selected. I am going to convert this circle, that circle, this one here, and I'm going to use a cut for those. And I'm just going to go through all, again, I probably would do them separate, but just to speed things up. So with that, you can see how easy it is to create your imported geometry. Uh, again, I like to leave the model and just turn it off. Um, and now I know that my model is correct. There's also a 2D to 3D tool that's available. In our translation techniques class, we talk about it. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's a way you can also take your original model sketch you would have left all of the views on there, and you would have set each view on its own plane, and you would use these tools here. You would align them up using this tool, and then you can create um, features. This would be extrusions and cuts, okay? For extrusions and cuts using 2D to 3D, you would use these here. You would not go up here to your feature command manager. This will not work in this one. You have to stay in that tool. Okay, so check that tool out if you don't know about it already. Again, the 2D to 3D tool I just explained tells you a little bit uh, about uh, this tool. It's really pretty awesome. One of the things I used um, this method a lot for is creating sheet metal parts. Many times you have a, a DXF that's like a legacy data you pull that into your file, and then you use your sheet metal properties. Um, you can use things uh, like sketch bends, uh, flats, tabs, you know, anything, any kind of sheet metal features that you would like to use, okay? Now, the importance of these import options, there's a lot of options that are available to us, and the ones I'm gonna mostly look at are these here, okay? Um, I'm going to actually open up the tire rim in a few different ways to show you how important some of these checkboxes are. Now, import options are available in your system options. Okay, they're right here under import, and then I'll show you in the next slide will be export. If by chance you're using an older CAD system, an older SOLIDWORKS like 2016, you can still get to these same features. They're just not going the, the same options for importing, they are just not going to be in your import or export. It will pull up a separate window that will show you just this information right here. Okay. Under the file format, we can look through different file formats and pick the one with the options that, you know, best suit you, or you can leave it under general. For now, I'm going to leave enable 3D interconnect turned off. Import diagnostics is a tool. We'll go through it a little bit. Automatically running import diagnostics, I usually leave that turned off when I'm importing. The only reason why is I can do it after it's imported. So I want a quick import. I don't want it to take up any more time. And then I can run it once it's in. It'll just be a faster import time. Check, entity check, I like to leave that on. And when I start going through the file translations, you'll see why that checkbox is important to leave it on. The other things we're going to look at is the forming solids and also this B rep mapping. This box right here, very important. I think a lot, I don't know really anywhere that shows a lot what this little checkbox means. Import multi bodies as parts. If someone gives you a file that's a, a assembly file, it would be imported as a dumb solid, one big blob. If you import multi bodies as parts, what will happen is any multi body part or assembly, it'll pull them in so each one has its own dumb solid, okay? that you can, you know, look at. 
Export options as well, if you are exporting to someone and you want to send them a SOLIDWORKS file and send them in one of these native file formats here, you can send it out in different ways and this inform some of this information will change. Okay, so that's the importance of import and export. Here's the fun part. All right, I've got this tire rim. It's a step file. I'm going to pull it over in, in four different ways just so that you can see the differences. Okay. I also say whenever you are translating a file over from into SOLIDWORKS from another software, if, if it looks like you have a lot to have to fix or deal with, try one of these other options. Don't just stay with one option. Okay. So first off, I'm going to go to my options under import. I'm going to leave my full entity check turned on and I'm going to, again, leave my import diagnostics and just try to form a solid. I'm going to open up my tire rim, which is my step file. Okay. I told you earlier about the import export options. If you're working in SOLIDWORKS 2016, you won't see those options, but the options are available if you click on a file other than all files. And my options didn't come up this time. There should be an options box here that would set you. Oh, there we go. You have to hit the file first. There's your options. Again, pulling up that import. Okay, so if you forget to set it, you can do it upon opening a file. You'll see here we've got 466 surfaces it's trying to trim up. And you'll see this is my dumb solid. Okay. I will run import diagnostics on that. I can simply right mouse click and do import diagnostics. And you'll see that it has a faulty face. Anybody want to say, well, I don't really care. It looks fine to me. Wrong answer. We want to make sure that all of our imports are good. The reason why is, first of all, file size. Sometimes imports, if they have these errors, faulty faces, gaps in between, it could be a larger file size. Also, if this file was imported into SOLIDWORKS and then used in, um, for other models down the way, this will just stay there throughout you know, the entire file. So what we can do is right mouse click on it. We can repair the face individually or delete it. The what's wrong box just tells you, you know, we've got a geometry problem. Down here, if you're not familiar with import diagnostics, we can heal all, which will do both faces and gaps, or just do heal all faces. Whenever you see the green check in this green here, then you know you have a good model. Go ahead and save it. Again, it's a, it's a dumb import. This import now would be ready and clean for running the, uh, the add-in tool of um, FeatureWorks or recognize features, okay? So that's our very first one. I'm gonna close that out. Now the second one, I'm gonna open it up again, but I'm gonna do it without that entity check, okay? So let's go in, I'm gonna uncheck that. Pulling in again, trim surfaces, trying to create a model. Look what happened. Instead of a solid body, it did surface bodies. All right, if you want to work with surfacing and, you know, and that's it, that's great, but I wanted a solid. If I run import diagnostics, you'll see we have gaps everywhere. Looks like right here where the lug nuts go. We can heal all or heal all gaps. And now we would have a decent model. No faulty faces or gaps remain. Watch what happens when I hit OK now. We've gone from a surface body to a solid body. So again, you know, it, it did it everything for you. You didn't have to work, try to fix the surface model, uh, you know, use some of your surfacing techniques, trim it all up just so you can knit it and create your solid. So one little checkbox means a lot. All right, I am gonna close this guy up and do it two more times. This time, I'm going to use the option called B rep mapping. Um, also notice, when there was a gap, it pulls out this ERR file. We can turn around and just delete those files. They just made the error because it had a, an error in that 
it couldn't create a solid. So that's where that came from. I'm going to do my step file here, my options. BREP mapping, I'm going to leave my entity check off. BREP mapping is just a different way that SOLIDWORKS is going to translate a file. Now, some people just say, well, I leave BREP mapping on because it works better. That's your option, but just so you can see what it will do. That with no check, I'll open. Notice now it's going to say constructing topology to solid instead of trying to trim surfaces. All right, so again, it settles for a different way. Um, importing, I can also go up to my Evaluate Command Manager and go to Import Diagnostics. Ooh, lots of faces. Looks like we've got a whole combination of a lot of stuff. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to heal all. This is not going to be pretty. I'm just going to let you know right now. It'll take just, I don't know, about 20 seconds or so. It's trying to take a total of, I think it's 18 faulty faces, and trying to trim them up and trying to see exactly, notice their surfaces, trying to put it all together. And in a second here, you're going to see that this is probably not the best option. Bam. Yes, that's happened. Okay. And you think, what in the world just blew up? Okay. At this point, <laughs> I wouldn't bother. I would just close down this file. And I would say, okay, this is not the best option. I am just going to close that. I'm not going to waste my time trying to fix that. And I wish I could see everybody nodding their head going, yes, I agree. All right, last but not least, that same BREP mapping. Let's pull it up here with that entity check. BREP mapping. Again, working through solid, imported file import diagnostics. Now that turned out perfect. I didn't have to do anything. We don't have to deal with faulty faces, gaps. So you can understand why some people just say, I'm going to leave entity check and map be right mapping on and I'll be golden, right? So anyway, that's the importance of, you know, picking those options that are available to you. If you ask me what's right, what's the right setting for me? That's a million dollar question right there. It's going to depend on your model. Um, in this case, you could see how I pulled it in four different times. Um, at that one point was, you know, unworkable at that one. Never settle for that first one. Um, they sometimes won't go as smooth as they did for me here, but, um, and sometimes you might have to ask, if, if nothing works, you might have to ask for a different file. Maybe the import wasn't done right. Maybe someone just used some default settings and didn't pay attention. So don't be afraid to ask for a file. Three, let's go into diagnostics. So the translation errors, why do they happen? A lot of it is because of translations. Now here's one that was native geometry. It looked great. It's got, we all love fillets, right? They're great. Sometimes it might have missing geometry. You might have some spots in here. Notice that it's, it's even um, a hollow part right here. Um, it translated with that area not coming in. Some of the reasons why those translation errors are there is because tolerances. A lot of times SOLIDWORKS goes rounds out to about 16 decimal places. Um, rounding errors can be caused, you know, between different uh, CAD softwares. Translation mapping. What we have in SOLIDWORKS as a, as a uh, extruded feature or revolve feature might not translate the same in another software. And also, if there's missing entities, those surfaces are not going to translate whatsoever, and then you'll have some errors. So when we use that import diagnostics, right, we identified the problems either in faces or gaps. It gives you the tools that you need to repair them. Again, healing them, removing them, whatever you need to do to get your um, imported solid, if that was your goal. Okay, we want to make sure they're valid. Again, very, very important. Now, here's an example of an iJust file. Okay. Um, this is the example of the options box that you'll get if you're in 2016. See how it's not the import box? That's why I have this video, because it's opening it up. 
whenever you pull in an imported file, it will come in shaded, not shaded with edges. So that is common, all right? And I'm just showing you an older version here of some things like zoom to selection, fixing faces, et cetera, and the what's wrong box. Just doing it on a different file type today. Okay. Again, a good file now that I can take and I can manipulate and utilize um, the way that I want to. The check command. When we added that check command on our imports, this check command is in your evaluation command manager. Uh, you can use this to look at different files and our different features or the whole solid. This is what it's going through. By default, it's just doing solids and surface. If you have any model that you want to check, even after it came in, you can actually, or just check selected items or features and find out even maybe the minimum radius of curvature of these files. That's what the check feature was doing. All right, on to repairing. What happens if import diagnostics didn't work? If you don't want to ask for another file and go through it, run the import diagnostics tool again. So get out of the file, save it, and then rerun it. I know it sounds goofy, but once you save it, pull it back in, rerun it just to see. Okay? And again, sometimes the second time around. If you haven't heard of the term round trip or round tripping a model, that you can take a model, import it in, then save it as a, another, like a parasolid file, call that in, and then run import diagnostics on that. Again, what it is is it's taking the file, you're importing it, bringing it into SolidWorks, saving it, pushing it back out, and hopefully you know, that's another way that can help you, okay? And also your import you know, types, um, if it was a native format or a parasolid or step, try different types. If not, here's a quick way that we can look at this problem area, use tools to fix it. This is where you have to get out your surfacing um, hats and tools to use. In this case, we've got a, a corner problem right in here. Some people say, oh, it really doesn't matter, but in some cases you want to have a good model. So you might want to have to redo that. Um, in this case, if you, if you happen to have this model and do a filled surface, filled surface won't work, loft surface won't work. So instead what we did was we do surface offsetting. We would delete the existing faces that we didn't want. We would trim everything up, knit it. Um, you can use things like spline on surface or try to do a filled loft or boundary or even a replaced face. A lot of different options you can use. And again, check entity. I want to show you really quickly how we can take this part here. It's a step file. And if we have a problem in that corner, it just came in as a surface, not a solid. You can see here we are going to try to, um, you know, take care of the gaps, take care of the faces. And in some instances, it'll work. And in some instances, it will not work. So what, you know, in this case, one face. All right, so what do we do? What we don't know is we just say there's that one face in the corner, we'll change our display, and I don't know if you knew, you can take surfaces, an offset surface, we'll take those three there and offset it at zero. If you do it at zero, it'll be right on those original faces. You'll see we have our one solid, and then we have our surface bodies. I hit the surface bodies, and then I go in and delete this whole area here, because we're going to redo it. Use delete, not delete and patch, or delete and fill. So now our solid is another surface body. We can use those surfaces. You extend out these surfaces. With surface extend, you have to do one surface at a time. Picking these edges, pick the other. I didn't want to talk any faster today so you can understand me. <laughs> All right. We can trim them up then using a surface trim. Again, mutual trim with your three surfaces, keep or remove. 
and then we'll knit everything. Oh, we'll put our fillets in here in the surface. So we'll use a surface fillet here, or just a fillet command. Put that in. Then we know that that corner is going to be correct. We're using a multi-radius fillet here because one of those fillets is a little bit different size. And so that's a way we can use that. We will now look at all of our surfaces together and we'll knit them and create a solid from both of those here. And now you've got a solid body. Okay, a lot of work when you work surfacing, but again, uh, if you can't get a good import, this is the best way for you to fix. Now, if you have complicated gaps, um, like this hat here, you can see we've got a lot of drama going on right here in this corner, okay? Not so much on the other side. So if we had to fix this, we'll have to do that in four sections. This one, you might be able to use a fill surface, and we can do this one here. Then we had to fill in this one, and then we had to fill in this one here. We can't do it all at one time. What a mess, right? So think of it this way. Next time this happens, if it does, hopefully it doesn't, look at symmetry. Symmetry, I know that the, this, is, this hat or this helmet in half is symmetric, and right through the middle, this part over here is the one I don't want, but this part on this side is perfect. So use symmetry for complicated gaps. I use this right plane as a cutting tool and then cut off this portion, just keep that one, and then mirror it over and your part's done. Again, when you want to repair your models, um, this part now that we just changed up is, is, uh, is now ready for edits and feature works. Okay, uh, if that's a tool. The file size will be smaller. If you want to use this file in an assembly or drawings, you won't have any issues later on. And then um, I'm going to wind up here with just a little bit of 3D Interconnect. 3D Interconnect was up, um, introduced in 2017. This is where you can pull native files, Creo, SolidEdge, NX, TIA, Inventor, into SolidWorks directly as a file inside of SolidWorks. What it allows you to do is keep the other, if you have um, the other CAD system, you can keep that file, just pull it into the assembly, made it, um, and work with it without doing any conversion. Okay, it will have an associated link to the original part unless you break it. And then also, if you update changes to your file, you can update the CAD data in the um, other application through downstream features. Um, also, grab CAD. Um, if you use GrabCAD file, let me take, show you this one. Translating this GrabCAD file of this really cool front back loader, whatever it is, it was created in Inventor 2016 with 759 components. It took t almost 13 minutes to bring that into SolidWorks, okay? Just doing an import. You had to have Inventor View installed, okay? And then also look at all the gaps in here. Hours and hours of, you know, import diagnostics, trying to recreate that. So why would I want to use 3D Interconnect instead? Okay, also no link back. For 3D Interconnect, the same 759 components, three times faster. No additional software, you don't need any viewers. You don't need to run import diagnostics and it's linked back to the native file. So you can see the benefits here. I don't know which one you would use, but in this case, if I just wanted to pull that loader into something that I was using, 3D Interconnect would be the, the way to go. I'm gonna show you one last video here, and that is of 3D Interconnect in action. 3D Interconnect, we're gonna pull up um, a file, a part, and it's an IPT, an inventor file. When we open the inventor file, what we're opening is so we're not converting it. We're not, what we're doing is just dropping it in and you'll see in the feature tree, it's got a different icon. You see the, and we're just gonna very quickly mate this battery. <laughs> and this is hilarious because it goes super fast, right? Um, it's gonna put four of these batteries in. If you look in your feature tree, you'll see the different icon. You'll see the part icon with an arrow that tells me that that is an imported file that is not a SolidWorks file. 
You can use those. In this case, they want to extend out their battery, uh, not the battery, the um, flashlight cover or holder, okay, and use those faces. You, it's, it's interactive with it, okay? We can also see that the Creo part itself, um, if we have any updates, we can update the part itself. Um, if the battery was updated, we can copy that over and use that. It's all linked back to the original file, okay? Makes it very easy to interchange here, our parts, okay? All right, what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna go ahead here real quick with the 3D interconnect, pulling in natural file formats. The one thing I wanna point out to you that I found out, SolidWorks 2020, SP2, you cannot use 3D interconnect. It will be out, um, it won't work correctly. You have to wait for service pack three. Um, found that out when doing a demo for a customer about a month ago and SolidWorks got on it. And so service pack three, the 3D interconnect will work properly, okay? Just so you're aware. Um, and then also, again, you need the, for 2D, you need the viewer. Again, 3D interconnect is a great way to use those files. They can be read into there. Now, 3D Interconnect will not allow you to pull in any kind of drawing files of any software. I just wanted to make sure that was clear. Um, DWG and DXF is the only kind of 2D software that you can pull in. Whew, I went through a lot today, didn't I? Um, I really hope that you got some good information, at least information you can look at later by the use of these 2D file types or even the preferred formats. Again, the tools to identify, repair your problems. Again, we wanna make sure that your files don't have errors, okay? And then the 3D interconnect, if that's a tool that you need help with, you know, call into support if you need any questions or anything like that.